The School of Hard Knocks 22 took place at the Century Casino in Calgary. Professional and amateur fighters from across Canada battled it out in the Hard Knocks cage. set to take on Elvis Bukai tonight, who's making his amateur debut. Steen winning his first fight by Kimura, which is not something that we see over uh, a lot here in the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship. We see a lot of arm bars, uh, but uh, we haven't seen a lot of Kimura, so Greg Steen uh, bringing an extra level of jiu-jitsu here into the Hard Knocks amateur ranks, as well uh, a purple belt in jiu-jitsu, and uh, it allows him to continue work on high levels of jiu-jitsu, of course, the purple belt around the waist of his coach uh, at MMA University. Says he wants to utilize his reach and work on the stand-up uh, for this fight and says that he needs to get out and get working on the striking, but also feels very relaxed when he goes to the ground. Again, this next generation of MMA fighters, young guys working through systems like they have at MMAU, very well versed in all aspects of mixed martial arts. They don't have that kind of very specific background that they try and adapt to it. These guys start training MMA right from the beginning. They go through the program and guys uh, that are coming out of MMAU, very successful here in the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship. Says he needs to focus, he does, Greg says, on his conditioning uh, as well as some other aspects and, and really work every aspect of MMA because, of course, in today's game, you never know where your opponent's going to try and take the fight. And, uh, and of course, with an unknown opponent like Elvis Fukai, no tape on him as well. It should be an interesting set to find out exactly where this fight will go as Greg Steen steps into the cage. And his opponent. Please welcome. Elvis Bukai! Elvis Bukai comes to us out of Knuckles MMA here in Calgary, weighed in at 169 pounds, just 18 years old, standing six foot tall, says he's a stand-up fighter and that his ground game is not bad, and that's a, a direct quote from Elvis. Uh, says it's not bad. Doesn't say it's good yet, but of course he's only been training for eight months here in uh, at the Knuckles Gym, and, and feels like he needs to continue training and progress. But I talk to a lot of fighters, and, and what Hard Knocks offers them is the opportunity to get in the cage as an amateur, and again have that record not count. Doesn't matter if you're 0 and 100 as an amateur fighter, as long as you're 1 and 0 as a professional. And so guys like Elvis are stepping into the cage uh, maybe a little earlier than we would have seen in the past because, again, they can have that amateur fight. They can have that record disappear when they become a professional, if they become a professional. And so guys are getting in sooner and sooner. 
And now, the official Hard Knocks Fighter introduction. In the Rick Pig Apparel Blue Corner, he's 1 0 as an amateur and he's 23 years old. He stands 6 feet tall and weighing in at 171 and 1 half pounds, fighting out of MMA University from Calgary. Please welcome Hard Knocks Fighter. Goes at, at storage red corner. It's his amateur debut. He's 18 years old and stands six feet tall. He weighed in at 169 pounds, fighting out of Knuckles MMA from Calgary. Please welcome Hard Knocks fighter Elvis Vukai. This bout will be contested under amateur rules. The referee in charge of the Hard Knocks action is Mr. Len Coivisto. Len Coivisto, our referee, as we get set for our fifth fight of the night. Five of ten amateur fights before we head into the professional bouts with four of those on the card tonight. Elvis Vukai wearing the black trunks with red trim, mostly white trunks for Greg Steen and the early punches going to Vukai. Yeah, both these fighters again looks uh, looks like very dynamic striking as they they come forward. Uh, it's uh, straightforward. It's not looping. They look, both know how to throw a punch properly. So uh, hopefully we're going to see some great shots and some great action here. Elvis Vukai uh, rocking some uh, some great shots. Looked like Greg Steen was looking to pull guard in the standing position, but they're back to striking. Yeah, Vukai seems to be getting the better of the striking thus far and, and wants to stay on his feet. Uh, again, that's what he told us was the plan last night, was to stay on his feet as long as he can and beat him with his striking. So uh, knowing his opponent had a submission victory also probably played into that. Big shots here. Uh, I don't know if any of those really landed from Vukai. That one definitely did. Big shot there by Vukai, who again in the black trucks. Tried to throw the big uppercut as Steen came in, but Steen dodges that and gets him in up against the cage. Vukai throwing an unorthodox knee, but manages to pop out. Doing a very light on his feet is Elvis Vukai. Yeah, very quick for a 170 fighter. Uh, again, nice body shot there. It's taken in as a jab. Uh, again, if I were uh, Greg Steen, I'd be trying to slow down Elvis Vukai, because obviously uh, a little bit quicker. So getting a hold of him and trying to push him up against the cage and wear him down. But Vukai taking my advice here <laughs> that I had for Greg Steen. Up against the cage, Vukai has Steen and is trying to work the advantage. I'm sure a knee is coming. There it is. As, the, again, the Knuckles fighter, fighters very much into the dirty boxing and the Muay Thai style of stand-up. And uh, Vukai doing that up against the cage. And you can hear uh, his coach in the background yelling, knee, knee, knee. And uh, we'll see if Vukai, we've got a timeout. A low blow struck and two neutral corners for both fighters. And again, we'll see how long Steen decides to stay out and take his break. Up to five minutes, again allowed on a low blow. Steen doing a bit of a dance. Trying to get everything together. Looks like he's all right. Giving it a rub. When you get punched in the punched in the arm, you do the same thing. It's uh, it's it's the best way to cure things. But right at it and coming straight forward is Elvis Vukai trying to take advantage of maybe a not quite ready Greg Steen and throwing a knee to the body and landing. Not often you see a flying knee to the body, but Vukai's tried it twice now. Absolutely, and uh, slipping on or showing his quickness is Vukai and. Uh, Greg Steen needs to be a little bit more controlled as he's going forward. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to go fast, just has to go in, in, in quickly. Uh, I don't know if those sound similar, but uh, he needs to penetrate but not run straight at him. Vukai still dancing as we get towards the end of round number one, just 20 seconds to go. And Greg Steen looking to try and get in close. 10 seconds remaining now in round number one. Vukai again coming forward, bleeding from the nose now off a Steen strike, but uh, for my money, Steen not the victor of round one. Vukai taking round one there with uh, some superior striking 
and really got got in and, and got the job done, it looks like here in round number one against Greg Steen. Yeah, uh, definitely the quicker of the two fighters. Uh, you, you saw multiple examples of that, and uh, we'll, we'll see if that quickness keeps up. Uh, Bukai looks like he's in very good shape, uh, doesn't appear to be too tired at all. Let's have a look at the uh, the feature fights replay here, as coming for trying for that uppercut, and pushing him against his cage is Greg Steen. I think this is where we're going to see that unorthodox knee yeah, that you the, called there. The unorthodox knee coming from Bukai. And he used that, I guess, to, to push himself away. Knowing that the strike was there, maybe back seen off of that front leg a little bit enough to allow Bukai to slip free. And, uh, and again, while well, it was steep coming forward, and, and that's always something judges look for too, uh, it was certainly Bukai landing the better of the strikes in round number one. Well, coming coming forward is is good, and it does look good to the judges. But if Bukai is setting himself up as a counter striker, so that's waiting for your opponent to move forward or waiting for your opponent to attack and then countering through. Bukai in the, the black and red trunks, red and white, the color scheme for Greg Steen as he gets ready to come out of the blue corner. Round number two now underway in our fifth fight of the night. Both fighters exchanging. Steen landing a nice leg kick there. And that's a way to slow down a jumpy fighter is to take his leg out from under him and not make him want to leave any weight on it. Big leg kick there from Steen. Good. Working with uh, Orestes Bertrand, uh, who does the uh, the Muay Thai over at MMA University. Uh, you'll see the, their sign uh, for Cal Fight Club uh, and for Cal uh, Muay Thai. Those uh, leg kicks are a staple of his career and uh, does a great job of teaching them there. And all three of those leg kicks were very excellent by Greg Steen. Bukai now with Steen up against the cage, trying to work an advantage, throwing a knee of his own to the knee of Greg Steen. Steen responding with some elbows to the midsection, or knees to the midsection rather. Both uh, fighters exchanging knees up against the cage. Continuing to push him up against the cage and the official's gonna break him up and put him back to the center here. And uh, another warning there for Elvis Bukai to keep those knees away from the groin. Great leg kick there on the outside. That definitely caved in the leg. And you notice, you mentioned the great way to stop that jumpy fighter. Elvis Bukai has slowed down since these leg kicks. And not, uh, not as much bounce in his step after the leg kicks from Greg Steen. But a nice combination there, landing as Bukai gets in close and continuing to throw punches. They're coming from the outside, but they're getting through. And Steen now has Bukai up against the cage and delivers a knee. Getting good knee position is Bukai as he's pushing in. And uh, he is warning him for a shot to the groin again. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he does take a point away. Yeah, and, and he there, is taking that point. There away. is the one point from Elvis Bukai for a third low blow in this fight. And uh, again, certainly does not look intentional um, as they're scrambling and he's trying to throw knees up into the midsection or hit him in the knees. I'm sure, but uh, nevertheless, getting hit there for a third time certainly can't help Greg Steen's chances as this fight continues because as we've heard from other fighters, it can really damage your stamina and, and your recovery time when you've suffered that kind of injury. And it looks like he took his time this time, a, a little bit more time than he took last, but it, again, that, that lasting effect, and it's something that, that uh, can drain a little bit. A great snap on that leg kick by Elvis Vukai. And one right back. You didn't hear the snap, but that was a clear shin to the uh, shin to the big muscle on the leg, uh, right on the hamstring quadricep uh, area. And there's another one there. Very effective on these leg kicks is Greg Steen. Vukai responding with a leg kick of his own. Again, down one point after low blows. 
It looks like when, when Vukai is slowed down, Greg Steen feels very comfortable. As soon as he picks up the pace, he looks less comfortable. The hands start to, to get wary. Where's that punch coming from? He's actually moving his hands because the punches have been coming from the side. He's moving his hands back and opening up his face. So we'll see if uh, Elvis Vukai's coach uh, notices that and uh, is able to, uh, to uh, let his athlete know. Down to 10 seconds now left in the round. Some more big punches coming from Vukai. That exchange not necessarily landing as tight as he wants, but a big knee to the midsection. Maybe a bit lower than the midsection there. Seems to have a target on that area. Yeah, might, might want to get a different design on his shorts or something because uh, the target seems to be there, the fourth of the low blow of the fight for Greg Steen. Well, unfortunately for, fortunately for him, uh, or sorry, fortunately for Elvis Bukai, the official didn't see it um, and didn't appear to, for it to be that way, so he didn't, uh, he didn't call him, and if he had had another point taken away, there's pretty much no way that Bukai could have won this fight with two points deducted uh, as it stands now, and there's uh, one of those uh, kicks that's very close to uh, being low blow, but nice punches here, and these are landing, and they might not be uh, huge shots, but uh, they are doing the damage and making an impression in the judges' minds. Well, again, that one point deduction may lose large as round number two certainly closer than round number one. And as this fight continues, that one point may make a significant difference between whether or not Elvis Bukai will win his debut and Greg Steen could stay undefeated. Taking a look at the replay again, a big right hand and a left follow there from Elvis Mukai. Greg Steen, though, seemed to recover from that quite quickly. Just doing some last moment cage maintenance. As they come out, Mukai sneaking towards the center of the cage. And they touch gloves, and they are underway again. Nice jab there from Vukai. Yeah, and they're coming straight forward now, not uh, not looping. So, and another jumping kick. Uh, a couple jumping knees, a jumping kick. Elvis Vukai likes to take to the air, it seems. And Greg Steen doing a good job of securing that single leg. Hasn't quite worked the takedown yet, but appears to have it now. No, Vukai recovers. And Steen now trying to switch to the double and maybe work his way to the back of Elvis Vukai. He is going to do that, and you watch that he gets the hooks in. It's going to prevent him from getting taken over, and he's going to end up in, uh, well, Vukai did a great job here, but a little bit of danger here as the, the legs are in a submission area, and back standing goes Elvis Vukai. He doesn't want to part any part of Greg Steen on the ground. Greg Steen, another solid kick to the leg of Elvis Vukai who again down a single point after low blows during round number two. And Steen tries to cut Vukai off up against the cage and he'll be looking to again work the knees and potentially secure a takedown. Yeah, right up close, right next to us here. And uh, Steen doing a great job pushing him up against the cage and controlling him, trying to wear down Elvis Vukai to slow him down and get him more onto Greg Steen's way of fighting, which is much more deliberate. It's not as, uh, as fast and quick as uh, Elvis Vukai. But uh, again, it's going to be a question of these leg kicks versus the striking, the, the, the punch striking. Because better of the leg kicks is Greg Steen, better in the, the striking with the fist is Vukai. So we're going to see what those judges say. The only thing that we do know now is one point down is Elvis Vukai. Vukai now finds himself pressed up against the cage trying to drop to the ground and potentially get out of it, but double underhooks from Steen, and he works the takedown to perfection once he got into that situation, wrapping up Vukai and taking him down, but Vukai, to his credit, popping right back up. Don't think he's gonna pop up quite as fast after that one. Great takedown, nice throw, good position, and inside control is Greg Steen. I think, you know, despite the fact that he wanted this fight standing, I think he's learning from some of these earlier fights. These are big knees into the side, and they'll make an impression with the judges, especially since we had a stoppage from this same position. 
So the judges are going to see that more as a damage and less as uh, just keeping busy on the ground. Again, a winner by Kimura in his first fight. Elvis Bukai finds himself on the bottom of Greg Steen, who's continuing to throw knees to the lower body of Elvis Lukai, and he finds himself on top. This one, not so easy to call from a judge's standpoint. Again, all we know, Elvis Lukai deducted one point in round number two, and that could weigh very heavily here as we look for a decision. Yeah, if it's two rounds to one for Lukai, it's gonna end up being a draw. If it turned out that that second round was won by Greg Steen, then uh, Greg Steen, uh, we, we think, we know the first round from, went to Lukai, Pretty sure the third round went to Greg Steen. So it all comes down to that second round. And again, that one point could be very important in the grand scheme of things. It's good defense here. Uh, the Wizard's there. The leg is back as he continues to go back uh, from, uh, from this move is uh, Elvis Bukai. But uh, sticking with it and being more tenacious on it is Greg Steen. He elevates it, steps in and ends up getting into a good solid position here, taking him up against the cage. Once again, you can follow the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship on Twitter at HK Fighting. And if you want to find out all the about of our events, you can go to www.hardknocksfighting.com. Looks like they're just finished up the adding up of the scores. Our next fight, again, is uh, is an amateur bout. It's gonna be Mackenzie Singer taking on Jeremy Edwards. And so uh, we wait for that one at the 175 pound division. Both those fighters have a win under their belt. Uh, two and one, Mackenzie Singer, one and one for Jeremy Edwards. Jeremy Edwards uh, fought in uh, Hard Knocks Fighting Championship two. Uh, and uh, lost there, came back and was able to win his last hard knocks fight. Uh, and uh, he's one of our older fighters. Uh, he's uh, maybe uh, 40 years old by this point. Uh, but uh, again, we wait for the official decision of his fight, which is Elvis Bukai, who's shown on the screen right now, pointing out to all the people in the crowd. And uh, his opponent, again, is Greg Steen from MMA University. I think they're just clarifying, uh, clarifying the points over there. The judges. Ladies and gentlemen, the official results are in. Brought to you by Cruise Custom Homes. Tonight, we have a majority draw. So a majority draw called, which uh, basically means that on two of the judges' scorecards, it was a draw. On the other judges' scorecard, it was a majority uh, for one of the people. Go with Ryan. He comes out, uh, he took a lot of shots. Uh, I'm not sure if I take one of those and I keep walking. Uh, a lot of low blows, he keep coming forward, he end up with a draw. They call me Frank, you see, because I've got a hard head and I'm not exactly I don't know, it's I just got a hard head and I see. All right, ladies and gentlemen, one more time for your fighters, Elvis Bukai and Greg Steen. To find out more about Hard Knocks fighting and upcoming Hard Knocks events, 
please visit hardknocksfighting.com. This school of hard knocks fight is an amateur bout in the 175 pound division and is brought to you by Rick Pig Apparel. And now, let's meet the fighters. Please welcome Jeremy Edwards. Next up on the Hard Knocks 22 card, we've got Jeremy Edwards, an independent fighter out of Edmonton, Alberta, taking on Mackenzie Sager. And here we see Edwards coming down to the cage at 40 years old, one of the older fighters here in the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship. I would uh, wager, I guess, to say one of the older fighters in mixed martial arts at age 40, but he comes down to the cage Ready to take on Mackenzie Sager. Of course, uh, we saw Jeremy Edwards successful in his last fight by Americana after losing his debut fight to Jesse Dayrider earlier in uh, his Hard Knocks career coming down at one and one. Says it's unusual for him to see a fighter with Mackenzie's reach because he doesn't have any training partners that have the long limbs that Mackenzie Singer has, and so he's going to have to figure out a way to get around that, and his striking doesn't work, and he finds himself uh, deficient when it comes to the reach of Mackenzie Singer. He'll try and take this fight to the ground. Jeremy Edwards saying that fighting a guy half his age is not a factor, and that he's healthy and fit at 40 and wouldn't be here if he wasn't competitive. Of course, uh, I referred to him as 40 years old. He refers to himself as 40 years young, and he wants to be the first guy to stop McKenzie. Of course, uh, McKenzie has a two and one record as an amateur, but uh, that one loss by decision. So he wants to be the first guy to get in there and stop Mackenzie Sanger uh, and, and says that uh, he feels well-rounded for this fight. Of course, we have seen a very, uh, a very active Jeremy Edwards in the cage before, and we'll see what he's able to do against Mackenzie Sanger here in the cage tonight. His opponent, please welcome Mackenzie Singer. Mackenzie Singer now coming down to the cage. He weighed in at 170 pounds, comes down with a two and one record coming off a decision loss that he didn't feel. Of course, uh, I talked to a lot of fighters and a lot of guys come out and they say, well, the judges didn't have it right. Mackenzie Singer said, no, I lost that fight. I didn't do what I needed to do. And, and for my money, I'm probably a better mindset than, than feeling like the judges screwed you because of course, now you can come back and say, this is what I need to fix. This is what I need to work on. And this is what I need to get in and do. And he said that jujitsu was where he was deficient in his last fight. The opponent's jujitsu, just too good for him to uh, continue fighting or to fight against and feels like needed to focus on jiu-jitsu in camp, and that's what he has done for his fight with Jeremy Edwards today. He says that building for a fight, of course, a stress builder, and, uh, and is looking for that release of stepping into the cage and getting the fight and getting moving, and uh, of course, his coaches at Dynamic have him well prepared for this fight. Uh, he says he's not afraid of having a height advantage in this fight. Um, and, and that, of course, meaning that he, he's, he needs to get in and utilize his reach and, and really get in and, and try and, and stand up with his opponent because, again, his jiu-jitsu was found lacking in his last fight. And there's only so much you can do in between fight camps to really improve that skill. And Mackenzie Singer, of course, having three fights in quick succession here in his amateur career. So uh, uh, looking to get back on the winning road tonight against Jeremy Edwards and uh, says he watched some tape on Edwards and feels well prepared for what Edwards has to offer. So we'll see what these two fighters do up against one another. For the official introductions, we'll head into the cage with Jaden Ants. And now, the official Hard Knocks fighter introduction. In the Rig Pig Apparel Blue Corner, he's one and one as an amateur, is 40 years old and stands six feet, three inches tall. 
He weighed in at 176 pounds. Fighting as an independent from Edmonton, please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Jeremy Edwards! And in the two amigos moving in storage red corner, he's two and one as an amateur. He's 26 years old and stands six feet, four inches tall. He weighed in at 168 and one half pounds, Fighting out of Dynamic MMA from Calgary, please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Mackenzie Sanger! This bell will be contested under amateur rules. The referee in charge of the Hard Knocks action is Mr. Brian Beauchamp. Brian Beauchamp, our referee, Mackenzie Sanger, coming out of the red corner in the blue trunks, Edwards out of the blue corner in the black trunks as we get set for fight number six here at the School of Hard Knocks 22 uh, presentation of the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship. Sanger taking the pace early on, trying to cut the ring off. He gets a leg kick for his trouble after getting a jab through. Right hand lands from Edwards. Both fighters landing a couple punches and a couple kicks. They're both feeling each other out at this point, trying to uh, see where the weakness is, see what their tendencies are. Uh, you know, there's there's not much tape on amateurs. You, you look at the pro fights and uh, pro and professional fighters have dozens of fights, uh, some of them under their belts, so there's lots of tape to watch to come up with a game plan. When you have an amateur record of one and one, an amateur record of two and one, not much to watch. So first minute is a feeling out round, and uh, we see that uh, we're almost down to that one minute in to uh, round one on our featurefights.ca clock in your right-hand corner of your screen. Edwards landing the better of the kicks thus far. Sharper kicks to the outside of the leg of Mackenzie Sanger. Sanger, on the other hand, going for the inside leg kick. And another big kick there from Edwards. That one had to sting. As Sanger tried to check it late, but not in time. There's a nice catch by Sanger and uh, used it to land a nice little leg kick there. Uh, I, I would look that if he catches him that well to be able to step in and, and take him down. Uh, it looks like both these guys are content to, to stand up and, and strike and uh, work their, their kicks. There's some big shots there and in on the body is Sanger driving Edwards into the cage and looking for the takedown. Trying the double leg right now is Mackenzie Sanger up against the cage. Jeremy Edwards doing a nice job thus far of defending the takedown and rolls Sanger over onto the cage. And maybe looking to do some damage from there as well. I talked to Edwards last night. He said he was looking for this to be a striking fight. He said he can go to the ground if he has to, and, and we see him doing so now, and uh, may end up with Mackenzie Sanger on his back as Sanger doing a nice job with those long legs to roll over and now finds himself in the mount. That, uh, and a bit of a mistake here from Jamer, Jeremy Edwards. At, at that point when he had, uh, had the advantage, he needs to complete the takedown. He needs to not necessarily take for granted the fact that he's in a good position. He needs to get into a solid position that, that uh, Mackenzie Singer can't counter from. Uh, he didn't end up doing that. However, he does have that arm deep and uh, in the guard is Mackenzie Singer. Down to our last 10 seconds and uh, even with this small takedown, this round might go to Mackenzie Singer. Yeah, the takedown may prove to be the difference here in round number one as uh, Mackenzie helps Jeremy to his feet and we get set for round number two. Both coaches, I'm sure, will have words for their fighters about uh, weaknesses they saw in the other guy's game, but uh, it seemed like Jeremy Edwards got the better of the striking and did secure the takedown, but once it got to the ground, Sanger doing a very good job of what he was unable to do last time, and that's get on top of his opponent and, and really work his position from on top. Against Gerdip Brangi, he spent three rounds on the ground on the bottom and not able to do much. And you can see one of the leg kicks there coming from Jeremy Edwards, a big one and another one, and you can see Sanger got out of the way of the second one after taking the first. 
Yeah, those those don't feel good. Uh, if, for those of you who uh, who are fans of MMA and uh, you, you see those leg kicks, uh, you can see a prime example if you go back and you look at the fight between uh, Jose Aldo and Uriah Faber at just how a leg kick can change a fight. Uh, Faber's leg was blue and twice the size of its regular uh, goal by the end of the fight. And uh, leg kicks can change the fight. And there's some uh, great ones there by Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Edwards and Mackenzie Singer after feeling the first one just didn't want to be a part of the second. And again, more replays here as we'll get to see the takedown between the two fighters. Just 10 seconds left in the break. But you can see Jeremy Edwards eventually break Mackenzie Singer down and take him down to the ground. But after that, it was Singer on top. And uh, it did not turn out well for uh, Jeremy Edwards towards the end of round number one. It'll be interesting to see how the judges score that one should we get to the scorecards at the end of the fight. There's a good shot, nice counter by Mackenzie Singer. And Ed just missed with the uppercut as well. Edwards came over on the top and Singer looked like he was trying to set it up for the uppercut, but Edwards quick to get out of the way. Said he'll stop competing when he can't compete with 20 year olds anymore. And uh, thus far doing a solid job against Mackenzie Singer. Again, uh, not quite half his age, but uh, when you're talking about a guy who's 26 versus a guy who's 40, you, you might as well. I'd like to be in Jeremy Edwards', Edwards shape when I'm 40. I, I, I think that that'd be a good thing for I'd me. I'd like to be in Jeremy Edwards' shape now. Edwards trying to defend with the guillotine and the wizard against the double leg. Sanger's got that double leg deep, though. If he can get it behind that one knee, there it is. The slam coming from Mackenzie Sanger down on Jeremy Edwards. But again, finds himself in a choke. And Edwards is a submission uh, submission fighter. Uh, knows how to get the submission in. And that one forearm well under the chin. If he can get his other arm in there, this fight, Mackenzie Singer could be in some trouble here. Yeah, Mackenzie Singer right now in side control. So that's not going to necessarily be an issue right now. There is some torque, but not necessarily enough to finish the fight. Uh, Edwards again has it nice and deep. Originally, Singer opted to, to go towards the uh, towards the guard of Jeremy Edwards, but thought better of it as he felt that choke getting tighter and tighter. I better go back to uh, back to side control. And Sanger now seems he's pulled free of the choke and has popped back up into mount. Trying to get that one other foot free. You can see Edwards still has a very shallow half guard as that one foot still in there, but uh, as much as a mount as, as Mackenzie Singer could hope for at this point. And he'll be looking to drop damage from here as he is on top of Jeremy Edwards and he'll be throwing bombs. Yeah, a tough, a tough spot with the amateur rules here in the Calgary Commission uh, to be able to land striking effectively from a mount. Uh, you have to get up nice and high and uh, that leaves you in danger of getting swept. Uh, but uh, Mackenzie Singer doing an admirable job here, landing shots to the chest of Jeremy Edwards. Not going to do much damage, but looks good to the eyes of the judges. Again, staying busy and striking key in the judges' eyes. And Edwards tries to muscle out from underneath Mackenzie Singer and is unable to do so so far. The young man keeping the old man down as he continues to work from on top. And he'll be looking for an arm bar here with just 10 seconds remaining in the round. But Edwards squirts free. And we'll see if he can do anything here before the bell. No. And Edwards may need, him, need to find himself finishing this fight in round number three if he's going to win it a tight first round with the second round seemingly belonging to Mackenzie Singer. Yeah, great takedown by uh, Mackenzie Singer. Again, ending up in side control, which is where he wants to be on the double leg. Uh, if you've got that arm around your neck, side control is, is where you are and where you want to be because that's going to take that pressure off of off of the neck and off of the choke. Uh, it's very difficult to finish. If you do a double leg and somebody's got a, a nice guillotine in there and you end up in his guard, you end up in real trouble. Here's going to be the takedown there. He's going to clear the knees, sweep the legs through, and nice takedown there by Mackenzie Singer. Yeah, you can see if Jeremy Edwards had been able to secure the half guard there, he might have had 
a chance at the guillotine choke, but a little too down low was Mackenzie Singer. And good positioning by Mackenzie to drive through and keep his neck that low so the torque couldn't come up and moved into side control there. And from there, it was uh, uh, quickly into the mount and laying punishment from above. As you see, just to the left, uh, Wrath of the Titans, one of our uh, major sponsors. Um, we uh, thank them for sponsoring the Arnaud's Fighting Championship in theaters March 30th. And uh, looking forward to, to seeing that. Event. So Mackenzie Sanger uh, goes and uh, talks to his coaches. Jeremy Edwards getting some last minute advice as we head towards round number three, the third and final round in our sixth amateur fight of the night. Both fighters meet at the center of the cage in exchange. Again, the leg kicks coming from Edwards, answered with punches from Sanger. Edwards now landing some punches of his own. Sanger looking for the takedown. Has Edwards up against the cage. Edward needs to be using that arm. Instead of going for the guillotine, he needs to slip it underneath and elevate. And there he's doing a great job now getting the underhooks. And slipping to the single leg is Mackenzie Sanger, leaving himself open for Jeremy Edwards to land a few shots. And uh, some elbows. Those are nice, vicious elbows right to the lat. And a great takedown by Mackenzie Sanger. Edwards concentrating on the striking. Sanger concentrating on the takedown. Yeah, Sanger doing a good job of slamming Edwards to the ground for the second straight round and has the advantage, but again, finds himself almost in a guillotine here, but Edwards only with the one arm, not able to get the other arm around, so no real danger for Singer at this point, but again, unable to do any damage when your head's buried against the mat like that. Good job by Jeremy Edwards here, uh, double overhooks. He's trying to take away any ability for Mackenzie Singer to strike, but Mackenzie Singer adapting here and now opting to knees to the uh, gluteus area and uh, just taking away the power base of Edwards in case they end up standing again. Well, and again, Edwards doing a good job of holding on, but a minute and a half left in the round. He's going to need to make something happen here from the bottom as uh, Mackenzie Singer likely has round number two, and it looks like he's got round number three so far as he's done the majority of the action here as Jeremy Edwards finds himself on the wrong end of some knees and punches down in the guard, trying to land some punches of his own, but uh, it's a three to one ratio at this point for strikes taken versus strikes given. By, McKen or by Jeremy Edwards as he tries to scramble out. And I don't think necessarily Mackenzie Singer is trying to strike to end this fight. I, I think he thinks that Jeremy Edwards is a tough opponent and he's not gonna end up, uh, end up being able to do that. Uh, but he is striking to stay busy and that's very important uh, when in the mind of the judges. Again, continuing to throw strikes is Mackenzie Singer. It will also prevent the referee from standing them up as well. Uh, again, when you're in a dominant position, the last thing you want is for the referee to take you out of that for a lack of action. And moving now into the half guard of Edwards is Mackenzie Singer. He has freed himself up and threw one knee to the midsection, which caused a bit of a scramble by Edwards. He's trying to roll over, and now Singer has his back. Edwards rolls into him, but finds himself right back in the mount. A solid ground performance from Mackenzie Singer. He said he worked on his ground game, and that's certainly proving to be the case. Yes, absolutely. Mackenzie Singer showing uh, showing why he is 2-1. and one. And uh, looks like, again, we are going to the judges' uh, cards, but Mackenzie Singer it was fairly dominant in all three rounds and uh, looks to pick up his third victory as an amateur. And after the, uh, the, the hug between the two fighters, as Jeremy Edwards walked away, he kind of brushed Mackenzie Singer on the top of the head. Had a go, kid, way to get it done. Uh, Jeremy Edwards, again, a very game fighter. I would suggest he competed well enough to continue competing here in the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship. I'm sure we'll see him again as we take a look at the replay. Big elbows coming down on the back of Mackenzie Singer, but a nice takedown again of Jeremy Edwards having him up against and really working that ground game once he got into the top position. 
Yeah, great dominant, uh, dominance on top by Mackenzie Sanger as uh, he uh, was able to keep good position above all things and not go for it too much. Uh, there, there's a tendency uh, with certain amateurs to uh, try and rush that position. You get into good position and, and my coach says I've got to do an arm bar when I'm in, my position, in this position. And what he does is he ends up being in a solid position, doesn't take too many risks and stays there. Let things come to him. And uh, we look here again at the replay and uh, some big knees to the, uh, the stomach area. And this is just when Jeremy Edwards was trying to get through, trying to pass using the cage. But Mackenzie Singer again, great solid position, takes the back and then ends up in a mount. Looks like we have the official decision. We're gonna go to the center of the cage with Jaden Ants. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the official decision brought to you by Rick Pig Apparel. The winner by unanimous decision in the red corner, Mackenzie Sanger. A unanimous decision, Mackenzie Sanger, three and one as an amateur. Gives a congratulatory hug from Jeremy Edwards. He's with Ryan. Mackenzie, I'll ask you a couple questions here, center of the cage. Last time we saw you, Gert and Randy worked you on the floor around the cage. You told me last night, my ground game's gotten a little better. Certainly proved that in the cage tonight. Yeah, it was uh, after the last fight, I knew I had to work on that quite a bit. He uh, pretty much mopped the floor with me last time, so. But it was good, I worked, uh, worked on my wrestling and my jiu-jitsu with all my coaches. And just pays off when you train hard and work your butt off. Now you said to Jeremy as he was leaving the cage, nice leg kicks. I noticed he landed a, a solid one early and after that you started to check him a little quicker. Yeah, no, he, uh, he threw some good ones, my leg was stinging a bit, so I figured I might as well check him or else I wouldn't be able to do much more. Any, uh, any grief you're gonna take when you get back to the gym for beating a 40-year-old man? Well, no, no offense to the, the older guys here, but for a 40-year-old man, he's pretty tough, so. <laughs> Absolutely that, Jeremy Edwards, I'm sure we'll see him back. You got coaches to thank, we're hearing dynamic coaches getting thanked a lot tonight, but I'll give you your shot. Uh, yeah, it's uh, dynamic giving me a gym is the best there is, as far as I'm concerned. It's the best bunch of people, best training partners, coaches. They push you to your limit and then they get you past that and just keep going and going. I wouldn't be able to do it without my wrestling coaches, jiu-jitsu, striking, everything. All my teammates. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for your winner, Mackenzie Sanger.